In those remote days when the fates were determined, in the day when Anne brought about abundance, and people broke through the earth like green plants, and then the lord of Abzu, King Enki, Enki, the lord who determines the fates, built up his temple entirely from silver and lapis lazuli. Its silver and lapis lazuli were shining daylight. Into the shrine of the Abzu he brought joy. An artfully made bright crenadelion rising from the Abzu was erected for Lord Nudimut. He built the temple from precious metal, decorated it with lapis lazuli, and covered it abundantly with gold. In Eridug, he built the house on the bank. Its brickwork makes utterance and gives advice. It eaves roar like a bull. The temple of Inky bellows. During the night, the temple praises its lord and offers its best for him. Before Lord Inky is mewed, the minister praises the temple. He goes to the temple and speaks to it. He goes to the brick building and addresses it. The temple built from precious metal and lapis lazuli, whose foundation pegs are driven into the Abzu, which have been cared for by the prince in the Abzu. Like the Tigris and the Euphrates, it is mighty and awe-inspiring. Joy has been brought into Inky's Abzu. Your lock has no rival. Your bolt is a fearsome lion. Your roof beams are the bull of heaven in artfully made bright headgear. Your green mats are like lapis lazuli, decorating the roof beams. Your vault is a wild bull raising its horns. Your door is a lion who seizes a man. Your stairway is a lion coming down on a man. Abzu, pure place which fulfills its purpose. Ian Gura. Your lord has directed its steps towards you. Enki, lord of the Abzu, has embellished the foundation pegs with Coralian. The temple of Enki is provisioned with holy wax. It is a bull obedient to its master, roaring by itself and giving advice at the same time. Iangura, which Enki has surrounded with the holy reed fence, in your midst a lofty throne is erected. Your door jam is a holy locking bar of heaven. Abzu, pure place, place where the fates are determined. The Lord of Wisdom, Lord Enki, the Lord who determines the fates. Nudimut, the Lord of Eridug, let nobody look into its mist. Your Abgal priests let their hair down their backs. Enki's beloved Eridug, Ian Gura, who inside is full of abundance. Abzu, life of the land, beloved of Enki. Temples built on the edge, benefiting the artful divine powers. Erdug, your shadow extends over the mists of the sea, rising sea without a rival, mighty, awe-inspiring river which terrifies the land. Iangura, high citadel, standing firm on the earth, temple on the edge of Enger, a lion in the mist of the Abzu, lofty temple of Enki which bestows wisdom on the land. Your cry like that of a mighty rising river, reaches King Enki. He made the lyre, the algar instrument, the balag drum with the drumsticks, the harhar, the sabitum, and the miritin instruments offer the best for his holy temple. They resound themselves with a sweet sound. The holy algar instrument of Enki played for him on his own, and seven singers sang. What Inki is irrefutable is well established. This is what Ismud spoke as brick building. He praised the Iagura with sweet songs. As it has been built, as it has been built, as Inki has raised Eridug up, it is an artfully built mountain which floats on the water. His shrine spreads out into the reef beds. Birds brood in at night in the green orchards laden with fruit. The Sahur carp play among the honey herbs, and the Estub carp dart among the small geese reeds. When Inky rises, the fish rise before him like waves. He has the Abzu stand at a marvel, and he brings joy into the Edgar. Like the sea, he is awe-inspiring. Like a mighty river, he instills fear. The Euphrates rises before him as it does before the fierce south wind. His punted pole is Naira. His oars are the small reed. When Inky embarks, the year will be full of abundance. The ship departs off its, of its own accord, with tow rope held.
held by itself. As he leaves the temple of Erdug, the river gurgles to its lord. Its sound is a calf mooing, the mooing of a good calf. Inki has oxen slaughtered and has sheep offered there lavishly. Where there were no ala drums, he insisted some in their places. Where there were no bronze ub drums, he dispatched some in their places. He directed his steps to his own, to Nabiru, and entered the temple terrace, the shrine of the Nabiru. Enki reached for the beer, he reached for the liquor. He had liquor poured into big bronze containers and had ember wheat beer pressed out. In kukuru containers, which made the beer good, he mixed beer mash. By adding date syrup to its taste, he made it strong. In the shrine of Nibiru, Enki proved a meal for Enlil, his father. He seated Anne at the head of the table and seated Enlil next to Anne. He seated Ninter in the place of honor and seated en and seated the Anuna gods in the adjacent places. All of them were drinking and enjoying beer and liquor. They filled the bronze aga vessels to their brim and started a comp comp competition, drinking from the bronze vessels of Uras, and made a Telemala vessels shine like holy barges. After beer and liquor had been labated and enjoyed, and after leaving from the house, Enlil was made happy in the beer. Enlil addressed the Anuna gods, great gods who are standing here, Anuna who have lined up from the Abzu Unkeki, Kekena. My son, King Enki, has built up the temple. He has made Eridun come from the ground like a mountain. He has built it in a pleasant place, in Eridug, the pure place, which no one is to enter. A temple built with silver and decorated with lapis lazuli. A house which tunes the seven tiki drums properly and provides incantations, where holy songs made all of the house a lovely place. The shrine of Abzu, the good destiny of Enki, benefiting the elaborate divine powers. The temple of Erdug built with silver. For all of this, Father Enki be praised.